I'd like to say good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Brother McKinley. <laughs> and we'd like, we like to give thanks, honor, and praise to the Lord and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do that by remembering his Sabbath day and keeping it holy as he commanded us. And today's lesson, brothers and sisters, I'm going to get right to it, is Jesus, the God of humility. And I'm not going to cut my lesson today because if we run over time, it's the choir's fault. <laughs> they weren't ready. But today's lesson is Jesus, the God of humility, because humility is an important element in, in, in uh, getting into the kingdom. Uh, and humility is just this, this state or quality of not thinking you're better than someone else. You know, not, not looking down on other people. Uh, uh, and, of course, the opposite of that is arrogance, conceit, egotism, haughtiness, pride. All, things that the, all the things that the Lord hate is the opposite of humility. And uh, 1 Peter 5 tells us that uh, the Lord resists the proud, and give grace to the humble. Because if you lack humility, it is impossible for you to have mercy, forgiveness, meekness, to serve, to bow down to the Lord, or even to ask for forgiveness. Because that pride is going to get in your way. And the pride the Lord is talking about here, we're going to see what that pride the Lord is talking about here. He's not talking about being proud that you're a servant of God. Or being proud that you know that you're Israel now, but as long as you don't take that and think that you're better than anyone else. Because believe it or not, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, we're all the same. We have all been through things and have all done things we're not, we're not proud of. Nobody is here. Nobody here is without fault. Now, however, I mean, when I was in uh, middle school, I had this English teacher, and uh, and I never really never didn't really understand what she was talking about back then. But she was saying that kindness, meekness, humility, in the world today, they look at it as weakness. And now I understand the world teaches that if you humble, if you meek, then you're weak. You know, you got to be hard. You know. I ain't no punk. You know, you got to, you don't back down. But they not teaching our children what not, when not to back down, not to back down for the right reason. If you're standing on the word of God, you don't back down. But foolishness, you can let all that go. You know, and it's crazy. Some people are so full of pride and so haughty until they can have a grudge against somebody. Grudge can go on for years, years. Grudge go on so long they forgot why they, why they don't like it. Uh, man, how come you don't like him? I don't know. I haven't locked him for I haven't locked him for twenty years. I forgot why, but it must have been a good reason. <laughs> how you know if you don't even remember? He probably just took your parking spot. But that's what that pride to do for you. That pride to do for you. Because the Lord also tells us that humility comes before honor. And pride before fall. So what the Lord does, uh, brothers and sisters, he, put, he sent us through stuff. He let us go through stuff to knock that pride out of us, to humble us. Because the Lord can't use us until he humble us. Get us meek. Get us obedient. Obedient. Because he needs to know that we are sincere. We are sincere about his word, about doing what he says, what he tells us to do. And all the prophets from Moses on, they all went through something. The Lord tried them all. They all had to go through something before the Lord could use them. But let's go ahead and get started in this lesson. Let's start this at 1 Peter, the third chapter. 
1 Peter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let's see what the Lord thinks about humility. 1 Peter 3 and 1. First Peter 3 and 1. <clears throat> All right, brother, you can go ahead. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. So likewise, wives, be, be in subjection to your own husband. That don't make you, that, that you're not debasing yourself by doing so. You're not belitt, uh, belittling yourself. You're not putting yourself down by doing so. But that's the way the Lord had it set up and say, uh, uh, be in subjection to your own husband. Go ahead. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Even, even if they're not in this word. But if you keep doing what you're supposed to do, you keep acting like a child of God, they keep hearing your conversation, then you might just bring them into this thing. You might turn them. They see you're not fussing all the time no more. You go in here, you getting up, you, you doing what you're supposed to do around the house. You doing your part. They see that. They see that change in you. Hey, well, I wonder what happened. I need to go down there and see what's going on. If they could change my little lady. <laughs> they must got something going on down there. But go ahead, brother. Two, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. If they behold your chaste conversation Coupled with fear. You know, they hear you talking about, about the Lord. They see how you change. They ask, why are you, why are you so nice and kind now? Because I fear the Lord. Why you fear the Lord? You show them some scriptures. Oh, that's in the book. The Lord say that? Then they start to fear the Lord. And you bring them, bring them around. And you didn't hear the multitude of sin because you didn't turn brought somebody into this, into this true and living word. But go ahead. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, or of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. So don't just be about the outward appearance. This don't mean don't fix yourself up, ladies. <laughs> and brothers, this don't mean don't let your lady fix herself up. Come in here with a Kroger sack on, hair off. No, you ain't got to comb your hair. Who's going to see it? You're going to put on a hat anyway. No makeup. So she come in here and then a... a, a Another sister come by, walk by looking all good, all fixed up. You want to look at her. You know, you let your wife fix herself up. It don't mean that. Like, don't just be about the outward appearance. You know, don't just come in here because, you know, you get all dressed up looking good. Come in here, you're looking all good and stuff, but, it, but that mind ain't right. You know, you got your Bible, you walking here looking all good, and walk by somebody, oh, I can't stand him. You know, let it be that inward man. I got to tell everybody, I got six daughters. I tell them all the time, get to know a person. A person can act any kind of way in the beginning. I can tell a guy is never going to come up to you when they first meet you. Hey, sister, how you doing? I'm a womanizer, I'm a woman beater. Come on, hook up with me. I can make your life miserable. <laughs> no, they not. They're going to come with saying smooth thing. You know, yeah, I'm a good guy. You know, I got a good job. I know I, I take care. I take care of mine, you know. Until you get to know them. I say, get to know them. I tell them, just because you put a, 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 a gold salad on a jackass, don't make it a stallion. Right. You just got a jackass with an expensive saddle. So don't be about that outward appearance. You know, go ahead, brother. Four, <clears throat> but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Say, so let it be the hidden man of the heart. See what's inside of what they're really about. And well, with, with that meek and that quiet spirit, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Go ahead, brother. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Which is in the sight of God a great, great price. Humility is a great price in the sight of God. We're going to see that. It's a great price in the sight of God. But let's go uh, over to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. 
and see how great of a price it is to the Lord. Now, there are people, you know, a person can, can put on any kind of facade. They can't hold it for too long. Sooner or later, it's going to show. Just keep watching. That they, their true nature is going to come out. But uh, 1 Peter 5, and pick it up at 1, brother. Go ahead. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Go ahead. Feed the flock of God which is among you. So that's what the elders are supposed to do. We're supposed to feed the flock of God. But not with that physical food, but that spiritual food. That's why the Lord told Peter, feed my sheep. That's what the elders are supposed to do. That's what the leaders are supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to feed the flock. Give them something they can use. Teach them how to get eternal salvation, how to get into the kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Go ahead, brother. Taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint. But, but take oversight there, but not by constraint. Not with limitations. You don't cherry pick the word. Just tell them what they want to hear. You don't just tell them what they need to hear. Give it all to them. Give it all to them. The whole Bible. Go ahead. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre. But of a ready mind. Not for money. Not for financial gain. That's why we don't get paid around here. Not that we don't want to. I'm not turning down no check if it's offered to me. But we got to make sure we're doing this thing not just for money. Money will change the whole narrative. Trust me. It'll change the whole narrative. If you're a supervisor on your job, you're supervising 30 people, you're telling them what to do, do this, do that. Then if your boss come to you and say, I need you to clean the bathroom, what are you going to say? That's not my job. I'm super. I get some of my little, my folks to do it. I don't clean no bathroom. Then he said, I'll give you $1,000. Where the broom? <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't know. I just get this, this cardboard and I'll sweep it with my foot. $1,000? Want me to mop and paint too? He said, money changes. It's changed that narrative. You know, then it's, it's places now where the, uh, uh, the pastor who's over the flock got to let the deacon board know what they teach. And they tell them what they can't teach. And I'm not talking about not something that's off their head. I'm talking about stuff that's in the Bible. A guy came told me when he, had, he was coming to Israel for a minute and learning some stuff, going over some tapes of buoy, and he started teaching, and he went and was teaching about dry bones in the valley. But he wasn't talking about no hip bone connected to the thigh bone like they teach. He was talking about what it really, really mean. But the digging boy told him, oh, you can't teach that here. Hey, why not? It's in the Bible. Right. Well, we don't teach that here. You want to keep getting paid? Yes, a boss. I don't see no more dry bones. <laughs> you know, and he wanted that check to keep going. But uh, that was four. We're at three. We had three. Go ahead, brother. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. And that's the leaders and, and the elders that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be examples to the flock, not lord. We're not supposed to rule over them just, just because well, I'm in a position. So if it, I say so, I'm in charge. That's not leading by example. It's not a do as I say, not as I do. The people are supposed to be able to do as they see you do. Because what you're doing is supposed to be correct. It's supposed to be right. You're not supposed to oppress the people, keep your foot on their necks. You know, you lead by example. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Go ahead. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Because you're not doing it for yourself. You're working, you're working for the Lord. And when the Lord comes, he will give you your reward. And if you're not righteous, he's still going to give you what you deserve. So you can choose. You can decide if you want that crown of righteousness or if you want to go into that lake of fire. But go ahead. Likewise, you younger, 
Submit yourselves unto the elders. And it's the younger generation. Oh, submit yourselves unto the elders, children. Now, I know I got children. I, I've, I've raised children. I know kids don't think that the, the older people know what they're talking about. See, that is, there's a whole nother. The world has changed. There's a whole new generation. My kids used to trip sometimes. They be singing, and I sing. So, Daddy, you know that song? I've been knowing that song for 20 years. Oh, that's a remake? It sure is. Ain't nothing new. But you know, now, kids don't want to, you scared to even say something to the kids nowadays. But if you take a, a, just look at some of the kids that was raised up here in the ROG. You could tell, their they behavior is a lot different from a lot of these kids out here in the street. A lot different. You can see it in their attitude, in their mannerism. And I tell young kids all the time, listen to your ass. I know you think they stupid, but they didn't get old being no fool. Cemetery is full of, is full of wise young people who thought they knew everything. You know, it's full of them. Where are we, brother? Middle of five. Middle of five. Go ahead. Yay. All of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. He said, be clothed with humility, and that's what the kids not being taught today. They tell you, you got to be hard. You got to be hard. You know, you can't be no punk. You ain't scared of nothing. Well, when you do something, the police come, why did you run? You know, you ain't scared. When you go to court, why you lie and say you didn't do it? You should get up there and say, yeah, I did it. I'm going to do it again if y'all let me out. <laughs> I ain't scared of y'all. But they get up there and they want to cry. I didn't do it. I wasn't even in the city at the time. All kinds of excuses. But go ahead, brother. Six. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. But humble yourself under the mighty hand. The mighty hand of God, go ahead. That he may exalt you in due time. That he may exalt you in due time. In due time. Not when you ready, not when you think you should be exalted, but when he's ready. So a lot of people, they get baptized. And they think, well, you know, I done got baptized now. I've been keeping the Sabbath, the high day. Everything should be rosy now. It should be good. We shouldn't have no problem. But that's not the truth. That's when stuff really starts coming at you. The Lord say, he that uh, departed from evil, making himself a prey in Isaiah 59. That's when things really start happening. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Go ahead, brother. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. And the Lord say, all his commandments. He wants you to obey all of his commandments. Go ahead. That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And it's for our benefit that the Lord say, all his commandments do so that he can give you the promise that he promised you. So it's for our benefit, not his. Go ahead. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. He said, remember the way the Lord led thee these 40 years into the wilderness. Go ahead. To humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And the Lord said, he did this for Israel to, to humble them, to get that pride out of him. He said, to see to test them, see if, he gonna, if they're going to keep his command. The Lord could have brought them straight out of Egypt into the land. But because of, they doubted, because their faith was lacking, the Lord led them 40 years in the wilderness, one day for every day the spies spied out the land. When they came and told Israel about how big the fruit was, but how big the people were, they got afraid. So the Lord said he humbled them to see if they would keep his commandments or not. Go ahead. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger 
and fed thee with manna. And he did. He humbled them. He humbled them, and he suffered them hunger. The Lord wasn't going to let Israel starve to death. And he fed them with manna, with angel food, bread from heaven. And they didn't even have to work for it. They didn't have to farm. They didn't have to, all they had to do is just go out there and pick it up off the ground. They, Israel wasn't satisfied with that. They complained about that. We tired of all these old, this old light bread. We, this stuff tastes like saltine. We want rich crackers. <laughs> you know? All we want more. But that's Israel. But go ahead. Which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And Lord, the Lord was letting them know. He wasn't he was letting them know. You got to do everything. I said, you don't live by bread alone. He was doing this as an example for Israel. And they missed it. They missed it. But everybody, everybody goes through something. Nobody is immune. And when the Lord tries, when he put us through stuff like this, he's not doing it just because. He's not doing it for spite. He's not up there playing no game, no sight games. He's doing it for our benefit. And nobody is immune. Everybody has to go through it. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke 4 and 1. Luke 4 and 1. And go ahead, brother. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. And that Holy Ghost, he full of was the word of God. Go ahead. And was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Go ahead. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And 40 days, and he was tempted by the devil. Just, see, just like Israel, the nation, they were they supposed to have been 40 days. They ended up being 40 years. Israel, the person, Jesus, he was 40 years in the wilderness, 40 days in the wilderness also. And he fasted, didn't eat nothing. And you know how it is when you get hungry, you get cranky. You know, don't want nobody to say nothing to you. And then, but then that's when Satan come up. You know, he always come in at your weakest point. But go ahead, brother. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, Command this stone that it be made bread. And devil, you know, he, he's cunning. He's crafty. He always play on words. If, if thou be the son of God. He knew who Jesus was. He knew who Jesus was. He knew he was the son of God. But what did Jesus do? Go ahead. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. But Jesus didn't exalt himself. He knew. The father said, this is my son. He said, and Jesus knew. The father even said, he's after the uh, uh, order of Melchizedek. He's preached forever. So he knew he was. He didn't boast about all that. All he did was quote scriptures. And, and he didn't actually zap for us. Sometimes that's what we have to do. When we're going through some stuff, get in this book. Get in this word. Get off to yourself somewhere quietly. And just read. Just read. That's what this word is for. Let me, that, that's what it's for, is for us to do that. But let's, let's go uh, 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 Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Hebrews 5 and 5. Because hey, everybody has to go through something, but the Lord does it to knock that pride out of us. Because you're full of pride, the Lord can't use you. The only thing you're good for to the Lord is firewood. Hebrews 5 and 5. Go ahead, brother. 
So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And Jesus didn't glorify himself. Even when Satan come, came at him, he didn't glorify himself. He always gave the Lord, he always gave the Father credit. He, he humbled himself, Jesus humbled himself even to the death of the cross. That even though the Father said, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. So Jesus knew he was the son of God. He knew where he had come from, but he still humbled himself. But go ahead, brother. As he says also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He said, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You know, uh, uh, and so some people, they like to get credit right away, right on the spot for stuff. But Jesus, he knew and he still humbled himself, didn't boast himself, didn't lift himself up, didn't get all haughty. But go ahead. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong tears, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. He said in the days of his flesh, when he was in the flesh, after prayers and supplication, prayer and, and supplication and crying and tears, he still, he still was obedient. He was still obedient to the, to the Father. But go ahead. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And though he was a son, learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. And see, that's what, that's what going through things to do for us sometimes. It learned, it, we learn obedience. And that's why the Lord put us through things sometimes. because We learn patience from it. We learn patience from it. You know, because a lot of times we growing up and we young, just getting started, we struggling. We going through things. Barely make the utility bill. Cutting back on how much food we can, we can buy right now. May have just enough gas to get to work this week. But Lord put us through all that because we learned obedience. And here's where, you know, you know how we are. Then we come up a little bit, we move into the burbs. Around our Gentile neighbors, the power go off, they run outside. Is everything okay? <laughs> we done been through that. We, I thought I paid that bill. <laughs> the kids already know. They get up and go get the candles and the flashlight. We look out the window. Oh, it's the, old, it's the whole neighborhood. <laughs> we don't panic. See, we done been through that. But we know we got patience. We got to, we patiently wait for them to come back home. You know? But that's what that going through stuff would do for us. It teaches us patience. It teaches us obedience. That's why the Lord said, when he, when he try you, don't kick against it. He preparing you for stuff. But go ahead, brother. Nine. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And that's the key, all them that obey him, that obedience. The Lord is all about obedience. And being made perfect, that's being, that's being perfect is to be God again. Because there is no imperfection, there is no flaws in God. And that's the only time we'll be perfect. And he became the author of eternal salvation. Gave us a chance to become perfect. But we have to obey him. Skip to, uh, uh, skip to 11. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. And since we've been in this world, we've got many things to say, but it's hard to get through to some people. Cause, and that's why, because their hearing is dull. So they shut their ears. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear it. They don't want They don't want to hear why Jesus came and died for them, and what's the, the end result if they obey him? And what's the end result if they don't obey, obey him? They want, all they want to hear is some nice, soft, somebody to scratch their itching ears. That's okay. You can do what you want to do and still get in the kingdom. Just ask for forgiveness. The Lord will forgive you. You know, when they come up to you with that mess, it don't matter. All that, you got to obey all that old stuff. 
The Lord nailed that to the cross. Just ask him for forgiveness. Pull out that 45 and say, give me your wallet. And I'm going to just ask the Lord for forgiveness after I spend your money. I bet they come up, well, the Lord say, thou shalt not steal. I bet they start going back to that old book then. But let's go further. Let's go further. Brother, don't let me talk too much. We got to stay on point. <laughs> go Acts the 8 chapter. Back up to Acts the 8 chapter. Acts 8 and 26. This is when that angel told Philip to go up to this chariot. It was this Israelite, but he was a, a citizen of Ethiopia, and he was reading something. Acts 8, and we're going to pick it up at 26. 8 and 26. And he was reading about Jesus. I'm sure some real humiliation here. Somebody that humbled themselves. 8 and 26. Go ahead, brother. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Okay, so he say, Arise and go down to, to uh, 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 Jerusalem. Arise from Jerusalem and go to Gaza, which is desert. Go ahead. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So, and he had come to Jerusalem for, to worship because he was coming down like the Lord commanded. And now he's on his way back. But go ahead. <clears throat> was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. He was reading Isaiah. Go ahead. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So that angel told Philip, go join thyself to the chariot. And uh, he was obedient. He went. Go ahead. And Philip ran thither to him. And heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And so when Philip came near, he heard him reading Isaiah. And he said, You understand what it is you're reading? <clears throat> now, this guy could have been all puffed up. Yeah, man, I know how to read. I'm not hooked on phonics. I understand. But no, what did he say? Go ahead. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And even though, <clears throat> even though he didn't fully understand what he was reading, he was still reading. He was still searching for that knowledge and that understanding. And the Lord sent somebody his way to show it to him. And that's what the Lord do. Sometimes you read something, I just don't understand that. I wonder what they're talking about. You come to class and the brother touch on it. You'd be like, that's what that is. And that's what the Lord will do. He'll send somebody your way. Go ahead, brother. 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like, a, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. Go ahead. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Okay, and this is talking about uh, um, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. This death sentence, sentence that was on all of creation was taken away. Because Jesus came and died for us and said, who shall declare his generation? Nobody. Because when Jesus, you know, after uh, uh, Jesus was the only one left in his generation in that providence from two years back. Here I killed all of the male kid, children from that period. Because so, so he couldn't get Jesus. So he just killed them all trying to just spread a wide net and try to cover it. But, but go ahead, brother. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? So the eunuch answered, so who is, he, who is this prophet talking about? He's talking about himself or he's talking about somebody else? Because he didn't fully understand what Peter do. Go ahead. I mean, what Philip do. Go ahead. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So Philip went back. Showed him what he was reading, started reading that to him, and explained it to him, and started telling him about Jesus. Tell him about what he needed to do to get under that blood. He started teaching that to him. But, uh, but let's go 
the Isaiah 53. Let's see what that, 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 that eunuch was reading. Isaiah 53 and 3. Because they said, this is talking about Jesus here. And see how he humbled himself. Isaiah 53 and 3. Isaiah 53 and 3. Go ahead, brother. He is despised and rejected of men. And he still is today. They're still rejecting him. They're still kicking against Jesus. Go ahead. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. A man of sorrow. He went through some stuff for us. Go ahead. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Nobody stood up for him when he was going through when he was going through uh, uh, his crucifixion and the beating and, and everything, excuse me, and everything, nobody stood up, stood up for him. He went through that all alone. He didn't do it for himself. He did it for us. He did it to save us. He was already God. He was already God. He was already perfect. So he did it for us. And they still kick against them right now, today. Go ahead. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. And go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our, trans for our sin. He came the Lamb of God. He became our Passover for our sin too. So our sin would be passed over. So his blood would wash the sins away from us. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes with his, we are healed. He suffered so we could live. He was punished, and he went through this punishment so that we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't have to. Go ahead. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. He went through all this, and we still backsliding, going astray, disobeying, denying him. Even today, we're still kicking against Jesus. Go ahead. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. For, for, for. He died for the whole world. He died for the whole world. But, but, uh, but go ahead. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. And he went through all this, and what did Jesus do? Go ahead. Yet he opened not his mouth. He opened not his mouth. He went through all this, and he didn't complain. He didn't say a word. I mean, I mean and that, that movie that was out, The Passion of Christ, that was nothing compared to what Jesus really went through. And we stump our toe. We scream and holler. You know? But he didn't say a word. And you know what, brothers and sisters? I, uh, uh, being in his word, one thing I... Learn also, sometimes the greatest ministry you could do of all is just be quiet. If you see somebody just kicking and just going against this thing, sometimes you can just, best thing you can do, just shut down. Because what they're doing is digging themselves deeper and deeper into that pit. The more you try to show them and the more they kick against it, they're just digging themselves deeper. So the best thing you can do sometimes is just shut down. Be quiet. Catch them another day. You know, maybe they had, had a bad day. Maybe they gave him some crunchy peanut butter and he likes smooth. <laughs> you know, so catch him on the day when he got his right peanut butter. Then tell him about. But sometimes the best thing you can do is just be quiet. But go ahead, brother. Middle of seven. <clears throat> he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He opened not his mouth. But let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. Because uh, Jesus had a certain mindset, and that's the kind of mindset we have to have. Philippians 2, and we're going to pick it up at 5. Philippians 2 and 5.
Because as I say, brother and sister, the Lord, you know, he put us through stuff to kick that pride out. Because that pride, you know, but that pride not going no. That pride will destroy you. That's why they call it foolish pride. That's exactly what it is. It will destroy you. But let's look at this. Philippians 2 and 5. Go ahead, brother. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's, that's I mean, if this kind of mindset, you should have the same kind of mindset of Jesus if you call yourself a Christian. And what kind of mindset did he have? Go ahead. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, Jesus could think this. Because he was God. And he knew that, that he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be taking nothing from the Father by saying he's equal with God. But we can't say that now without lying anyway. We can't say that because we're nowhere near that point. But go ahead. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. But he took up himself no reputation. And took up on the likeness of man. He put on this mud suit and came and, and became flesh. And he didn't come as a, someone with great power. Someone of great authority and rep, uh, wealth. He came as a servant. Now that is some humility. That is some humility. Jesus could have came as anybody. A leader, a ruler, somebody wealthy. Well, he took the low seat because he knew the Father would exalt him when the time come. It's like you got the opportunity, somebody come to you, you got, you got the opportunity to go to the White House and be the president, but you chose to be the janitor because you could help more people in that position. Well, I guess the president not an honorable job anymore, so... <laughs> But I think y'all know what I'm talking about. I guess anybody can be president now, but, you know, if all we know, maybe the janitor is doing more for the people now yep. than the president. But that's what Jesus did. He, he, he took the low seat. But he came in the flesh, came with made the likeness of him. He didn't even come as an angel. He became even lower. The net to become man. Go ahead. Eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And when he and he humbled himself. He humbled himself and he became obedient even to the death of the cross. Jesus had all his power. He could have stopped this. He knew how to tap in into that, that potential that we have, that power that we have. He knew how to tap into it. He knew how to call a legion of angels. He knew how to pray to the Father, and the Father could have just wiped everybody out around there. You know, he could have just wiped the whole planet out and just started over. But he knew he had a job to do, no matter how much suffering he had to go through. He had a job to do, and he did it, and he was obedient, even unto death. And because he was obedient, he was doing this as an example for us. Because he humbled himself, and was obedient. What happened? Go ahead. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. And if we go, if we humble ourselves and obedient, and endure this thing to the end, the Father do the same for us when the time comes. Go ahead. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And the time coming, and say, every knee. Every knee. So if you want to kick against them or not, when this time comes, you're going to bow to them. You're going to bow down to them. Go ahead. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Say every, every tongue. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So he said obey, not in my presence only. No, you just don't. Act like a child of God when people watching or when you think somebody watching. You always, always show that humility. You always be obedient at all times because we're supposed to be examples. And you never know who's watching. You never know. 
Well, finish that. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And work out your own salvation, your own salvation with fear and trembling because nobody else can save you. Your, your work's going to have to do it for you. And you don't know which, where you're sitting right now on that scale. You don't know if your righteousness outweighs the things you've done. So you've worked your own salvation out with fear and trembling. But let's go farther. Let's go, uh, 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 let's go to Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. And see what kind of mind the father had. Because we just read, say, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 57, I'm going to pick it up at 11. Fifty-seven and eleven. Let's see what kind of mindset that the father had. Go ahead, brother. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared, that thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart? So, Lord, say, who are you so afraid of? Who has scared you so that you would lie to me just and you forget about me? Who? Who's done this? Go ahead. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? He said, Have not not. Held my peace from time. I could have broke out on you at any time, but I didn't. I held my peace even from time of old. Go ahead. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they should not profit thee. He said, I will declare, I will declare your righteousness and your works that you've done. And they won't profit, they, they, and, and they won't deliver you, they won't profit you, they won't do nothing for you. Go ahead. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. Then when you cry out, let those that, let those you around, those that made you so afraid of me, let them deliver you. Go ahead. But the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. He said, but the wind going to carry them away too. They came to deliver themselves. And you following them. He said, uh, uh, the, the wind shall carry them away and vanity shall take them. Go ahead. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. He said, but he that put his trust in me, they're the one that's going to inherit the land. Go ahead. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. And go ahead. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. And thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. And that's Jesus. See, Jesus was before time. Yeah, he has no beginning. He has no end. And he inhabited eternity. That means he was there before it all. Go ahead. Whose name is holy. Whose name is holy. And some people, well, you know, I don't believe in that Jesus thing, so I just call him holy. I say, well, whose name do you baptize in? I baptize you in the name of holy? No, people say stuff and it's just crazy. But go ahead, brother. I dwell in the high and holy place. He said, and I dwell in the high and the holy place. Go ahead. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. He said, him also with a contrite and a holy, a holy spirit. He's talking about the Father. He said, I dwell with, with the Father, and he also have a contrite and a holy spirit, a humble spirit. Just like Jesus. Go ahead. To revive the spirit of the humble. Oh, so, and he dwell up there so he can revive the spirit of the humble. He's up there. He's our advocate with the Father. Go ahead. And to revive the heart of the contrite one. And so the same mindset the Father has, Jesus has, and if you're a Christian or a servant of God, you're supposed to have also. A quiet and contrite spirit, a humble, a humble spirit. Because that's what the Lord sees, and we're going to show that. Let's see it again out of Jesus' mouth. Let's go to Matthew's 11th chapter. Matthew's 11 and 25. <clears throat> Matthew's 11 and uh, 25. 11 and 25. 
11 and 25. Go ahead, brother. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid the things from the wise and prudent.